Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to episode 103 of Game Programming. I know it's been a while since the last episode, but here we are. Hopefully these are going to be a little more, little bit more frequent um, from here on out. But basically what we're, what we're going to do today is take a look at how mobs are going to be able to shoot at other mobs. Okay, so instead of... um, Because really they have absolutely no form of, form of attack right now and I thought that it'd be good to uh, kind of give them one just because, um, well, it's probably desirable. Um, and so what we're basically going to be able to do here is make a brand new mob that has the ability to shoot at the player, okay? Um, it's not going to have any kind of AI, okay? It's only just going to be able to find the player and shoot him. It's not going to walk towards the player, it's just going to be a stationary mob that will shoot at the player whenever, just whenever, okay? So let's, let's just take a look at that and see what we can do. So over here under our mob folder, inside our mob package, of course, we'll create a new class. We will call it. Um, so th basically, this is just this is just going to be a brand new mob that has the ability to shoot. So I'll call this shooter. Okay, really creative. Um, we'll make sure that, of course, it does inherit the mob class since it is a mob. Um, we'll add the unimplemented methods here, which have to be update and render, of course. And um, and what we're basically going to do is copy more or less. Um, well, we don't even need to copy anything. Okay, we could make the mob move. And we might do a bit of that in a minute, but we don't really have to because that's not the goal of this. So really what we want to be able to make it do is shoot. But first thing we should do um, is just basically render it. So let's go ahead and go screen.rendermob at, of course, uh, x, you know, y, and uh, the mob being this thing, okay? Um, and the thing is, though, the thing that people don't realize is that this is actually how easy it is to make a new mob, okay? One thing we should do is set X and Y, okay, in the constructor. So we might make a new uh, constructor here called public shooter. Um, we'll set uh, in X and in Y into the um, into the construct into the parameters with the constructor here, and uh, we'll of course just assign this dot X equal to X and this dot Y equal to Y. In fact, we might just multiply that by uh, 32, 16. Are we 16 size styles? I think we are. It's been a long time. Um, or we could just multiply it by, um, or shift it left, sorry, by 4. That'll be the same as multiplying by 16. Great. That's actually what we did, I think, in pretty much every other mob. So dummy had that as well, as you can see. Um, we should also set the sprite. So we'll set the sprite to be dummy, okay? Not going to do anything fancy. Um, it's just going to look the same as a dummy sprite. That's it. Now, what it's going to do though with shoot, so this is actually, you see this code here? There's like no code here almost at all, but all this code, that's all you need to create a brand new mob, okay? And in update is where you can call methods like move, like shoot, which is what we're going to do in a minute, um, and control the behavior of your mob, okay? And in the render, you can control any visual aspects, so visual and logic, okay? And then this is like initialization code, so where we want to put the shoot and what sprite we want to give it, all that stuff. So um, now let's go ahead and actually add it into the level. Of course, we've created the mob type, we've created the class, we've created the kind of template for it, the template. But what we want to do now is add it into the level. So the, our current level is our spawn level, right? That's the actual level that we walk around in. Um, we've added chaser mobs, we've added star mobs. Let's just get rid of... St I will comment out star and chaser um, and dummy, okay, honestly, like, we're dealing with it, I'm, 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 I mean, I mean, I'm convinced that you guys can see that these mobs all work, so there's no need to having a million mobs, well, not a million, but seven in this, in this case, running around and distracting us from, uh, from what we want to test out, so I'll just comment them out, um, well, so we'll add a new shooter, and we'll just pop it in, I think dummy, like, 2055, that was a pretty good location, okay, and let's import shooter, okay, so now we've added into, into the level, we've added one shooter, of course, into the level, and here in um in our shooter class, you can see that's all it is. So if we just launch this really quickly, you'll see that what we should get is right over here. We have just one mob, and it's just doing nothing, right? It can't do anything because there's nothing in the update method. If we were to put something along the lines of, let's just say, move up, um, so move zero minus one here, just into the update method, um, then it would just move up, and that's all it would do. You can see that it doesn't even have any animation, nothing. It's just a mob, okay? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys already knew that, but just in case you didn't, that's how all of that works. So, into the update method now, let's just make it shoot at the player, kind of like a turret, because it's not moving around. So, we'll make it kind of like a turret at this point. So, what do we need to shoot at the player, okay? I actually saw a comment or a forum post on my website the other day, um, and by the other day, I mean like a month, probably 
about two months ago, <laughs> uh, that said that it would be very, very hard to implement this kind of stuff because I think someone else on the forum asked how one would do this and the other guy was like, it's really hard. Uh, it's really not, okay? It's honestly, the, the whole thing's gonna take us three lines of code and you could actually probably condense it into one line of code. But um, basically, we need to get the player because we want to shoot at the player. So we need to get the player. We need to ha somehow be able to get the player's position since we want to shoot at the player. So let's go ahead and get the player from the level because we have a wonderful method in level in, in our level class called get client player. And what that will do is just get the local player because obviously this is going to be a multiplayer game. Um, and this get client player will just get the first, okay, the very first player in the players array list because the very first player in the players players array, li array list is the player that, well, I guess we're playing locally, okay? So it's not some multiplayer play, it's the player we're controlling. Um, great, okay. So, once we've done that, we need to somehow calculate a direction, okay? Because what this will, what what this p variable that we've created, which is an object, of course, of the player class, um, we've set it equal to get the client player, okay, from the level, which is just getting, I guess, the player that we're controlling, um, not some other, you know, multiplayer player. And then what we want to do now is figure out um, the direction that we want to that we want to get our shooter mob to shoot in, okay? Because um, if we just uh, bring up paint.net here. I've actually already drawn a diagram. Look at that. Um, I was rehearsing this episode because that's just how good I am. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, what we've got here is basically how we're going to work it out. So we can use the ATAN2 method here um, to actually uh, get, I guess, the angle, okay, in radians. Because what we, what we know, let's just say that we are um, this mob over here. Right, or rather, let's just because it's red. Let's just make let's just make it that is us. I was gonna make it the enemy, but it doesn't matter. That's us, and then this here is uh, the enemy. Or no, rather, red is the enemy, blue is us. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to shoot. We want we want to get the enemy to shoot towards us. Right. So basically, we want the bullets here or the projectiles to follow. Uh, give me a good color to follow this kind of line. Yeah, this black line here. Um, so to work that out, we need two things. We, we need a bunch of things, okay? And first thing is uh, the x and basically all we need, actually, to be honest, is the x and y uh, coordinates, or the, the I guess the position of both of these mobs, okay? The player's also a mob, by the way. It just happens to be controlled by us. Um, right, okay? We just we just need that, that information, okay? Then once we get that, we can work out dx, okay? Delta x. So what that is is it's basically just x minus x. It doesn't matter which one, because we're gonna... Uh, well, I get yeah, it doesn't really matter which one comes first, I don't think. Um, if you really want to be good, though, you probably ABS it, so absolute it, so that it's always positive, because you want a positive result here, that's the idea. Um, so, uh, we basically just go ahead and say x minus x, and that is what dx equals, right? And then dy is just gonna be dy equals y minus y, okay? And by y minus y, I mean this y minus this y, okay? So that's what we want to do. Then what we get is two variables, dx and dy. And then once we've got those two, uh, we just basically feed them in into this method and it will do some pretty fancy stuff, basically work out the inverse of tan, okay? Um, and then that will give us, of course, an angle, which we can then use um, to figure out the, I guess, the angle or the direction of the projectile that we want to fire towards, okay? So that's how that, that's the maths behind it, okay? So um, I'm going to stretch this out over several lines of code just because uh, it probably be easier for you guys this way. So I think positions are now sort of doubled. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say px, which is going to be the player's x position. That's obviously just going to be play, player.getx or p.getx. py is going to be player.gety. It's pretty uh, obvious. Uh, x is just going to be get x, y is just going to be get y, and that's just going to get our y. In fact, I'm pretty sure we don't even need that because I think we've got access to it anyway. Yeah, we do. Okay. Uh, and then that's it. Okay. That's all we need to work out our direction here. Okay. So our direction then is going to equal, as we kind of spelled out here, uh, math dot math dot a tan two. Um, and then we just simply feed in, I guess, dx and dy. Let's work out dx and dy. 
separately. So dx is just going to be uh, px minus x, okay? And dy is just going to be py minus y. All right, that's it. Um, so this, of course, you could just substitute this for, and you wouldn't need this variable at all. And you would get rid of two lines of code here because you do it for x and y. So what I mean is you could just do this, and then you wouldn't need that. Um, but again, in fact, yeah, let's do that. I'm pretty sure you guys can can tell what is what here. And this is get y. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we've got dx and dy now. We simply go. Make sure you do dy first, by the way. Otherwise, you'll get ridiculous results. Um, right. That's it, okay? We now know our direction of fire. So now what we have to do is actually shoot the projectile. Luckily for us, that's very easy to do because we made a shoot method in the mob class. It's right over here. And all that does is it simply shoots the projectile with the given angle and it adds it up into the level, of course. Let's get rid of this uh, commented code as well. We don't need it. Okay, wonderful. So now let's shoot it, of course, at our X position. That's kind of where we, where we want the projectile to start from. Um, just our x and y because we, we want to be able to shoot it or I guess the shooter mob needs to be able to shoot it from itself x, y and then the, the direction and that's it, okay this is in the update method so it's just going to constantly do that 60 times a second, okay there's no fire rate, uh, restriction, nothing okay, so let's go ahead and, and try that out you can see there's a line of fire to us right now, okay and as I move, look at that now it's, it's and as you can see by the way, like the collision for that is just perfect as well so everything is working as if it was us firing around a projectile like that. Okay. Now, one thing you probably notice is that um, the 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 start of this is uh not in the center, and that's that's not our problem. That's not our actual problem. That's just the fact that um there's no rendering offset. So what you probably want to do, and not just rendering offset, but what you probably want to do is um one or two things. So you'll note the dummy uh, does not have any kind of offset at all, okay? Whereas all the other mobs that we've made, such as the star mob, for example, actually has an offset of negative 16, okay? So what you could do is offset that render rendering thing so that it actually gets rendered kind of from the center rather than from the top left corner. Or what you could do if you don't want to do that, so that's one, that's one way, right? Just minus 16 for both X and Y, or you could add 16 to this, and it will give you the same result, I'll show you. But, um, yeah, it's up to you what you prefer to do. So you can see that's our, that's originating from the center here. Um, and if I do the same for get rid of that and just call minus 16 twice here, you can see that we get the same result. Okay, it's originating in what is roughly the center. Okay, and you can tweak that however you like. Okay, wonderful. So what about if he wants to move? Well, we've kind of covered that before. So in dummy, let's just make him move randomly, right? So I'm just going to copy this entire logic here. Um, and paste it into here, okay? And then there's a bunch of stuff here that we should change. So for example, uh, we need a variable here called time. So private int time equals zero. We also need two integers, uh, xa equals zero and ya equals zero. All right, and I think that's, oh, we need animated sprite as well. Um, so we need all this stuff and we'll just pop that up here and we should be set. Let me just get rid of that. Okay, so let's just try that. Now what our mob should be able to do is walk randomly and you can see he's just completely firing at us and there's actually no animation because we never rendered the sprite. So I think we just need this one line of code here from dummy into shooter and we should be um, animated and walking properly. There you go, see? So he's, con he's, just con he's just constantly firing at us and you can see he's always firing exactly at us. Look at that. He's moving, why not? He's firing exactly at us. Eventually, he'll get out of range or something, but yeah, okay? See? So that is how simple it is. It's literally like a few lines of code, a couple lines of code here. Just this. That's it. That's everything to make him shoot. So do with that what you will. Um, next episode, though, what we're going to do is talk about multiple targeting. So we're kind of going to cover targeting. So what if we don't just want every single mob in the game or this shooter mob to shoot at the player? What if we want that mob to shoot at whoever's closest or uh, at, a, at a random mob within a range, right? And as you can see, this guy is just shooting at us constantly no matter where we are. So if we're here, he can't reach us, but he's still shooting us. There's no like a range or anything. Of course, there is a range to the projectiles. Uh, that's why they're kind of despawning here. Um, but look at this. He'll even shoot at us through walls and everything. But um, yeah. So we're going to talk about multiple targeting and how we can deal with that in the next episode. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. Um, if you want to support this series and make sure that I 
basically, I guess, have the time to make more of these episodes. So in other words, if you guys enjoy the series and you want to help out, I do have a Patreon, a Patreon page. It's just patreon.com forward slash the Cherno here, as you can see. Um, and going to that, basically, you can just become a patron by uh, pledging a certain amount of money, like a dollar or, you know, 50 cents, whatever that is uh, per video. And then what you'll be able to do is just basically every time I release one of these videos, um, I guess you'll get, you, you, you'll basically just get charged and then I will get that money, thus giving me more time to make more videos. Very, very simple. Um, the other thing I want to obviously mention here is that I do have a forums. Uh, so in other words, if you guys have some problems with your game or um, something's going on or you, you want to collaborate with someone here, you want to uh, showcase some of your work, whatever you want to off topic, talk about your cat, your bunny, I don't know. Um, you can do that. Uh, the game programming subreddit, of course, ref uh, subreddit, not subreddit, sub forum, I guess. Um, the game programming forum refers to this series. You can see it's really active. I mean, today's the 1st of March and there's already been uh, two posts in just this forum. Um, so, and I I've, I've, haven't even made a video in like a month. Uh, so this is really this is really um, active, which is good, and you can see that all of these things basically have replies. Okay, out of this, out of like the tons that I'm displaying here, only two don't have any replies. Okay, and it's only been like a couple of days, it's been like three days. So not even three days, two days. So um, that is that's that. Okay, um, make sure you go to that. Make sure you register here. You can register. It's free, of course, and um, <clears throat> and that's it. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next episode, which will be multiple targeting. Goodbye. Thank you.